Nabjatani Luma, Mamma, and the Machine Kupa. Avaravuzati or a hot to the Hora Mishu. With no father to support them, Eric went out into the countryside looking for food for him and his mother. But when, after three days, he got home to their hut, he found his mother's dead body lying there, already being eaten by maggots and cockroaches. Rejected by his relatives, he had no choice but to go to Kigali, begging on the streets to survive. Two years later, at the age of 14, he was picked up by the police and taken to a transit center. One day we, we talk to children, we look to the children who had uh, big problems in their families and uh, who have the will to, to quit the street. So Eric came to Fadesco. The genocide of 1994 destroyed part of a generation of Rwandan society, so that for many families the kind of typical structure that builds from generation to generation just isn't there in the way it would normally be. The boys looked after and given temporary shelter at Fidesco all come from families unable to provide them with the basic necessities of life. In 2008, I came to Rwanda for the first time, and during that trip, I met with street kids who were hip hop dancers. <laughs> I was struck at that time how amazing it is that a kid who doesn't even have a home, who doesn't have food, who doesn't have parents in this case, could have this joy of life just because he dances. And when I saw that, that huge passion, that huge love, I went back to my country and I thought, I think there's something more that we could do with dance. Four years later, the Rebecca Davis Dance Company has a branch in Kigali assisting the Fidesco shelter there integrate former street children into society. The dance classes are part of a support program that would also permit some of the boys to find their way into formal education. She came to visit us. She has been impressed and she told us that she's a dancer. She can just help you through the, the dance. It was a way, a good way to, to to allow those, our children to, to express themselves through the, the dance. And we took the chance and we worked together and now uh, uh, since uh, one, one year. Huh? And uh, we are really, uh, uh, I can say, pleased for our partnership. As founder and director of her own dance company in America, Rebecca knew what it was like to choreograph original works and to go on stage herself to display technical and artistic excellence. She knew the rewards of that kind of achievement and the experience of being applauded by audiences. At some point in my life, that to me didn't feel like a reward anymore. For me, what was more interesting is to see how to use this tool of dance in a way to affect the way children think about themselves. Eric was one of our first students in our program here. And 
as we worked with him, especially with dance, because he has so much talent for it, he started to really latch on to that. And we saw more and more of the, the happy Eric and less and less of that Eric from the past. I told him that happiness is the source of, <laughs> like, like is the so can be the source of the other stuff that you may need or the life that you think you would want. Because once you're happy, you open up yourself and you can do the things which you you think you're not able to do. The Rebecca Davis Dance Company Rwanda also raises funding for a few of the best dancers to leave Fidesco and study full time at a nearby boarding school called Sunrise. Eric is one of them and Rebecca celebrates this with a gift. What do you think? <laughs> wow. What I've learned so far from my time working with Patrick is that you can never underestimate a child and for the type of work I do that's probably one of the most important lessons I can learn. Patrick was always the first person to get here on time, actually, some minutes before time. So he could come and do the stretching alone because he wasn't flexible, actually, like the other kids. He fought a lot to do this, please. But as time went by, Patrick developed, developed, developed. Patrick has never missed any class. He was always here. So he's committed when he has said that I would do this, he'd do it. And he really do it with all his heart. When I first worked with Patrick, I really didn't think that he had any ability in dance. Now I've returned for the fourth time watching Patrick, and he's the best in the class. He can do all of the stretching, he leads the class, he knows all of the choreography, he's done his own choreography, his jumps are the best, his turns are the best, his technique is the best. But he's still the same Patrick. He doesn't fight the other kids. He's just this quiet, calm boy. But the difference is that now there was this inner confidence. Patrick suspects that his excellence in dance may win him the opportunity to go to Sunrise Boarding School that he now visits with his friend Eric. But he's too scared to believe that the dream that he has held on to for so long may soon become a reality. Education offers the best chance for these children to escape their unhappy family circumstances and the grim future that faces most of those forced to live on the streets. Nuko 
ngiye kujya mu muhanda abagira neza umugira neza uzamba azamfata zanyijyanire wabare uzawujya kundehera amashuri Good morning Inzu ubungo buniyo tukibamo niyo tukibamo Je, kubera yuko tare na Rwandes, kuna nzima mukore. Ibi ibi nubio sa tuunze bjo sa, abiri bjo sa mara bihera sa na ba na pepe ya. Na rangi ni haya paka acha, na apa. Je, sins sins ari na je je kujitoa ch, nzigo nza 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 gumangori bjo anje gus, na chini kuna nzima kuhusu. Sanza di gutete, no arazo che c'è la. No arancia sa. A che è tam che era te su di mora corri. Ma che è? Jadi apa cerita itu manusia? Mungkin beri nasi di nasi aga. Mungkin bawa semula anggur barang ni dan kena kerana hari ini dapat tu mana tu tunjara aku nak tu bawa. When a child accomplishes the understanding of how to do, let's say, a pirouette for the first time, it's huge, it's like bigger than life. And this is what's different working in an environment like this, because here, when the child understands how to do a pirouette, the child has learned how to listen, comprehend, and execute. And those are the skills that he needs in life. So when we see that child after three or four months struggle and finally accomplish that simple step, we know now he's taken a gigantic step in his own life and the development of his mind. And emotionally for us, this is probably one of the most rewarding moments we are going to ever experience as teachers. Uh, when I started the first time, I didn't realize how much, uh, uh, how much uh, movement can change the life of people, especially for those vulnerable kids. I have seen uh, kids changing. It is difficult to describe it for someone who, who didn't experience that and who have been never in a, in a dance studio with the kids. I can say they dance their third and how they feel is, yeah, is how they dance. It's like their free expression. The Fidesco shelter never closes, but Sunrise Boarding School sends its learners home for the holidays at the end of the year. 
So Eric had no choice but to go back to the family whose rejection had put him on the streets in the first place. He found himself again subjected to neglect and abuse. He was not even allowed to sleep in the house. Desperate and starving, Eric was making his way back to Kigali when by chance he was found by a team from Vadesco going to visit him at his home. It's a lucky encounter for Eric because the neglect he has suffered has affected his health. He has no energy and there is a problem with his skin. This is eczema. Typically, this is eczema. And now he has a superficial fungal infection. This is the fungus. Mm. Why is it making him so tired? Yeah, we need to do other blood tests. The third problem is that Eric has been diagnosed with typhoid fever. So he's back at Fidesco until the boarding school opens for the new term. But he'll need a safe place to stay during the next school holidays. Without food and shelter, no child can focus on learning or developing his mind because he's using all his energy just to survive each day. These are children used to living on the streets. They can't even be sure that they'll make it to the next day. But this uncertainty gives many of them a passion for the moment that they bring to the dance class. As a teacher that travels around the world to work with kids, I also have the same approach because I won't be with them every day of their lives. So when we come together in that space, it's a special sharing, it's a special bond that we create because we know it might not last forever. I'm saying uh, basic things that we would say in a dance class. So like, Nibiza Chan is like, really good job. Nibiza, good. Nibio, that's right, that's right. I love teaching, but really for me, it doesn't even feel like I'm giving any energy because the kids are giving me their love and their energy and their passion, and I'm just responding to them. It's not something that, that I bring or I force into my class. I'm just so motivated to try to give these kids whatever I have in my head, whatever I have in my body, whatever I have in my heart, so that we can make use of that time that we have together. The Rebecca Davis Dance Company's approach to teaching is always to find positive things to say to the boys, especially when working with the weakest dancers. These are children who have known so much rejection in their lives that the experience of being affirmed by caring adults is a powerful one for them. And so, talented or not, they give it their all. Fidesco is not an orphanage or a home for the children. All it can offer them is shelter for a limited time and a program to help reintegrate them into life with their families. Eventually, the children have to leave. But what if the home the boy goes back to is unstable? Where will he go then? Chusa could only go back to begging for himself and his family, who have no other breadwinner. Nor does Fidesco have a place for him. All he can get here is meals and dance classes. Please, Chusa, don't give up, okay? Okay, it takes a long time in my country to find people who are going to help, okay? But just don't give up. And we hope that Fidesco is going to be able to help you in the meantime, okay? Fidesco runs a shelter, not a school. The computer classes offered there by the dance company are very basic, no more than an introduction to a world affluent children take for granted. They are just a taste of what may soon be available to a select few, like Patrick, for whom Rebecca has been seeking sponsorship in America. If he is to go to school, it is donors there who will pay for it. Tomorrow is Rebecca's last day in Rwanda, and Patrick still doesn't know whether he's been selected to go to boarding school like his friend Eric. He goes to sleep wondering and hoping.
Patrick, you were here when I first started the program at Pajasco. Every time I've come back since then, you've gotten better and better and better. Yeah. Not only better with Mbino, with dance, but also as a young boy. We have a spot for one more child, just one more. We're only going to have four children at sunrise, and we want you to be the fourth. <laughs> what do you think? Do you want to go to sunrise? <laughs> Are you ready to go next month? You have to quick chane, go korachane, go soma, English. You have to work hard. I am not changing these children's lives. What I am doing is trying to create an environment where these children believe in themselves so that they can change their own lives. And as an outsider, that's the most I'm ever going to accomplish. However, if I accomplish that, I feel satisfied in my own life. Okay, I'm a guru. Today, Olivier from Fidesco had the great idea that we should celebrate one year of work together between Fidesco and RDDC. So we've had lots and lots of different students as part of our program, but we get to celebrate this occasion with you. Dance is a movement, and the movement is life. So we move, then we are alive. And I think this is the basic of understanding how dance is important for each person. With encouragement and hard work, the boys improve their dancing, gaining self-confidence that becomes a platform to dream. <laughs> Yabin, <laughs> Patrick, he's just part way on this growth cycle. I'm so interested to see where he's going to go in his life. But if he keeps this confidence that he's developed and the sense of dignity, the sense of the sense that he knows who he is and he's comfortable with that. 
I mean, that's something that adults spend years trying to find, and this boy has developed it. <laughs> okay, give me a good time. Felix? No, <laughs> yeah, I will miss all of you very, very much. Bye, 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 bye. What's challenging about something like this is that I know that when I'm saying goodbye to this group of boys this particular trip, when I come back to Rwanda next time, many of those boys won't be here anymore. Some of them will be at home, some of them may have successfully gone to school, and some of them unfortunately may be back on the streets. And when you look at this group of boys standing around you, you don't know who is going to take a step forward in life and who's going to take a step back. America. The story that we want to tell the world, and I think it's the same for me and the children, is that you shouldn't give up on someone because of their circumstances. Instead, we should ask ourselves as individuals, what can we do to construct an environment where every child can flourish? Rebecca Davis visits Rwanda twice a year to teach dance to the boys at Fidesco. But dance and computer classes there are run all year round by Eugène Duchesne and his local team. For all the help and encouragement they get, in the end, these boys will have to make it on their own. But Fidesco and the dance program offer them a second chance. Patrick and Eric are seizing it with both hands.